What's in the box? Hey, how's it going? This is Jay from Out of Space. Today, for the first time, we finally have the whole crew together, live and in person. So we wanted to shoot a video to introduce ourselves and the game we've been working on for the past year. The game is called The Heist. It's based on, I guess, classic heist movies we love, like Ocean's Eleven, not Ocean's Twelve. <laughs> Ocean's Thirteen. I mean, uh, White Collar, Leverage are great, great TV shows. Inception is kind of a mental heist, but uh, I'll let the rest of the guys kind of introduce themselves. I'm Dean. I'll be handling the edits and playtesting. I also like to offer my opinion and podcasts and whatnot on the games I've played. Uh, my favorite heist movie would be The Sting. You can't go wrong with Redford and Newman and the Ponies. I'm Sean. I'll be helping out with the art and also playtesting and podcasting with these guys. And not really a heist movie, but I like Jackie Chan and his Armor of God series. I'm Jared. Um, I've been the one posting most of the YouTube videos so far out on the channel and keeping up on the Facebook page. Not a, really a true heist movie, but I'm going to go with Snatch. There is like the, the snatch and grab at the beginning. That I'm gonna call the, is that what I call a snatch? Okay. You like eggs? <laughs> <laughs> That's your name. Uh, my name's David. Um, yeah, my favorite heist movie I'm going with is Indiana Jones. And, and the Crystal Skull. And the Raiders <laughs> of the He's lying. Lost Ark. Lost Ark. Because I haven't even seen King of the He's Crystal lying. Skull. Thankfully. He'll drag this he through a collection of the whole young Indiana Jones series. <laughs> yeah. He's actually the president of the local Shia LaBeouf fan a, club. Yeah, he has a framed portrait of that sign to David, my friend. That's all true. Biggest fan. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I guess that's the crew. <laughs> That's our intro. <laughs> we're really excited to bring you our first printed prototype of the heist, and we're going to unbox it for you or un shrink wrap it for you uh, live. <laughs> Previously, we've been using a print and play version, um, but we finally were able to scrape up some steal some art from the internet and uh, get a nice printed prototype for you. So we're going to take a look at what is inside. You can see it's a hefty deck. Um, <clears throat> that was the fastest opening of shrink wrap that I've ever seen. Uh, Jay, did you uh, get that uh, pre-cut? No, of course not. <laughs> Just got long fingernails. <laughs> So we'll kind of try to separate these uh, decks out for you and go um, through all the cards. So here we have kind of the turn sequence, how to play, everything like that. Scoring at the end of the game, different phases of how you play. So these are just, I guess these prototypes are set up to be able to play eight players uh, out of the, the shrink wrap. So we have Tricks of the Trade. And these are um, an additional deck right now. When we launch the project, it might end up being a stretch goal or something like that. But these are kind of abilities, things that you can play on other players. We also included uh, just blank cards so people can basically create their own um, new characters, new abilities, and everything like that. So... But now we're getting into more of the good stuff. So the intangibles, you can see the backs. They kind of have this caution theme on it. When you go on a heist, you draw on intangibles and they have different effects um, that make heists more difficult. So And finally, we get to the crew. So you can see the various crew have different colors to signify their class with their heist value shown in the bottom right and then we have the rest of the starters here so I don't know if you can see 
Uh, each one of these cards is uh, completely unique in its value, its abilities. And of course, the last part of the heist are the actual heists. So um, these. Obviously, the artwork is currently um, kind of. They're placeholders, right? Placeholders. Now. Thank you, Sean. I, that word was stuck on the tip of my tongue. Uh, but the artwork will still be unique for every card. So that's kind of a quick look at um, what you get in the prototype version. And we're going to kind of break it down for you bit by bit. And everyone has to start somewhere. And for every heist, every player gets to start with, well, a starter crew. Your starting crew members don't have any abilities to bring to the table. You just can use them to, for basic heists like Robbing the liquor store or something. Something easy. So the most important thing about going on a heist is establishing your crew. That's one of the main components of this game, being able to recruit different crew to perform heists for you. Now before we go any further, I do want to mention that all the artwork here is not final. It is prototyped. Most of it is just a placeholder art. But it should give you a good idea of, of the style we're going for. We're not going to be using photographs, but we'll have really cool art on all the cards. To go over in detail a little bit about the different areas on the cards. So the first thing you immediately notice is the different colors on the cards. If you're colorblind, it's okay. Everything is still labeled for you. These identify the different classes. We have infiltration, logistics, thief, technician, and we have a neutral class as well. Doesn't really count for a class, but they give you points. Which brings us to our next value on here. The large numbers in the bottom left hand corner represent each crew member's heist value. When performing a heist or going on a heist, these values contribute to whether or not you succeed on a particular heist. Obviously a four might be worth more than, than a one. Some crew members may make up for their shortcomings by having additional abilities. So for instance, the lookout here, he only has a heist value of 1, but he has an ability called I see something. You may reroll the risk dice once, keeping the rerolled result. So the lookout, because of his ability, you may roll the risk dice having to send your player back to the recruitment pool or retiring them from the game, but he allows you to re-roll it, perhaps changing your luck. A lot of these abilities are kind of reactionary, so when there's a situation that calls for it, you get to automatically um, activate their ability once per turn. You may notice above the infiltration, he has a retainer. Some crew members' abilities are so powerful that you need to pay for their use over and over again. That's where the retainer comes in. On the inside man, he has a retainer of six, meaning if he goes or you add them to a heist, at the conclusion of the heist, you have to pay six coins back to the bank in order to return them to your laying low pile. Otherwise, they return to the recruitment pool and you would have to recruit them over again. All right, so you have all these different and unique crew members, but how do you actually add them to your crew? So in the upper right hand corner we have a couple different values. In the gold padlock we have their recruit cost. So when you go to recruit a crew you have to pay this cost in gold to the bank in order to add them to your crew. So up above the gold recruit cost we find each crew member's infamy value. Each crew has an infamy value to kind of represent their reputation, how well known they are, either to the law enforcement perhaps, or in the other circle of thieves they work with. For instance, the humanitarian has a high infamy value because he might be well known for giving back to the poor. He's kind of a Robin Hood type character. His ability is give to the needy, for instance. While the lookout does have a nice ability, but they're not worth that much in terms of heist value, so their infamy value reflects that. The other thing to note about infamy value is it's used as part of the recruit cost. So, higher infamy value, 
crew members can recruit other crew that also cost a lot. So altogether, when you're going to recruit crew members, you have to pay a recruit cost to the bank in gold and also pay for their infamy. But that's a look at the different classes of crew we have and some of their abilities and how things are laid out on the cards. All right, um, we're looking at the heist deck right now. So I've pulled out two specific cards for you um, to take a look at. Um, the first is the liquor store, because there's nothing better than robbing your neighborhood liquor store and then going back and robbing it again. This is a heist that does not leave the field to play after you rob it. It has a difficulty of five, so it is a very low difficulty. You should be able to complete it on your first turn, but it gives you an income of five coin. Um, because this is a smaller heist, a small time job, you do not draw an intangible while doing this heist, which is listed right here, which is kind of what makes the heist unique or their unique um, modifier on them. The second card that I've pulled out for you is the bank tunnel. So the bank tunnel, you know, much harder heist, so it has a much higher difficulty. So it has a difficulty of 26, and then it has individual class difficulties listed here. So we have a difficulty of two for the thief, three for logistics, three for technician, and four for infiltration. It not only gives you 30 coin, but it also gives you an infamy of 16. The unique modifier on this is called cave-in. So before attempting the heist, flip a coin. If tails, the technician difficulty is increased by three, or you retire one crew. So this makes it very hard to complete the heist if you don't have more than one technician, or if you're going with a small crew because it could completely wipe out one of your classes. But there is also a very high reward on this. Um, there is a little bit of flavor text on this. It says, um, hope you don't mind tight spaces. So if you don't, if you're claustrophobic, you might not want to go on the bank tunnel. But it's one that would give you a huge advantage over your other players. If you were able to complete it alone, more than likely someone would be trying to jump in on this heist with you as well to split the rewards. So here we have the intangibles deck and no matter how much planning goes into a heist something always seems to go wrong so this deck it represents any kind of uh, bad luck or unforeseen circumstance that will happen to your heist you will draw one of these cards during the heist phase of the game so such as this one no room for error here the crew stats cannot be modified for this heist so if you had any buffs you wanted to improve on your stats, this would make it so that you can't do any of that. We have another one here that has an added plus two to your logistics difficulty. So depending on what you draw, and you can be the best planner in the world, but one of these intangible cards can still mess up your heist. So these are the tricks of the trade. They're used to modify gameplay, uh, whether it's during a heist, before a heist, or in a planning phase, or against the player, or instantly whenever you want to. For example, you could play this card here that's on your mark. So you would play during the heist. That's after seeing the intangibles card. You may exchange up to three crew assigned to your current heist with three crew from your hand. So basically, you're changing the game, maybe to your favor, maybe not to your favor, you can play them against other players in a way that might give you an advantage or basically screw over another player or any type of way that might save some of your crew members from a bad effect or something like that. Thanks for watching the unboxing of the prototype for the heist. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And check out our Facebook at Out of Space Games. Twitter on Out of Space Games and our podcast, Out of Space Games. Catch you next time.